Uh, welcome to Friday. Um, I missed all of you yesterday. Today I'm in Chile and um, fantastic to have Teresa with us today as the artist. Uh, it's been uh, several years since I've seen Teresa because of the uh, COVID. She's a wonderful artist. Um, she has asked if you um, can keep questions to the end. That'd be fantastic. However, if there's something you need to ask, uh, please, by all means, do ask it. It's wonderful to be with you today. And with that, I'd like to uh, welcome Teresa. Hi, John. Hi, everybody. I don't. I can't see everyone's faces, so I know people are out there. Okay, there we go. So if you're on uh, Facebook today, I'm going to ask um, Giovanni and Gabriel and um, others to uh, bring your messages forward because I'm uh, just on an uh, iPad and really can't see your messages. Um, if you're on Zoom, you'll be able to talk to Teresa directly. So Teresa, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, I'm so excited. It's um, anxious and excited. To, it's been building up for a few, for a few months, huh? <laughs> awesome. And so Teresa is going to show us her PowerPoint presentation. And so, Ethel, can we start with that? Yeah, I will do the share. Fantastic. Screen. Okay. There you go. This is just going to be a little bit about me. Um, it's only like two minutes. So, um, I'm Teresa Gessling. I have my website. I, I got the dart, dot art at the end. Um, my motto is make every day a painting, which is another company I own called, it's an LLC. Um, I'm an artist, author, juror, and I teach international workshops um, all over, the, um, mostly Europe and in the United States right now, but I'm welcome to new ideas. Sure. Um, I have, I, I try to see the beauty of everyday life, even on a cloudy day. That's just why I enjoy painting vibrant, vibrant paintings with lots of light. I'm from Seattle, uh, Washington, and you can understand how you would like a lot of light. On the left is me painting at Daniel Smith doing a demo when there was a store. There's me painting a plein air um, in France, just self-portrait. Um, I like to paint loosely sometimes, and so the flowers, I enjoy painting lots of flowers. And there's me in the desert where um, I am right now. I'm in La Quinta, California. And under that, you can see I've been painting for many, many years, ever since I was a little, little girl. I've owned dog, I'm an animal lover. Um, I, I've written a book and um, called Make Every Day a Painting with another author. And I advocate for Daniel um, Smith um, Art Supplies all over the world. And I am the past president of Northwest Watercolor Society where I was really introduced to Daniel Smith Art Supplies. And they've been a great partner with, um, with me and um, and my journey. Thank you for that one, Daniel Smith and John. You're so welcome. Um, they have, I was honored with a dot card and, and um, they, I had picked 18 colors. Um, it also includes a white and a neutral tint dark color, which I um, encouraged Daniel Smith to help make um, to add to the palette because um, you can see, I kind of repeated the colors on my chart, but um, you can make those pastel colors that some of the other companies make. make. And so it broadened my palette so much when I had I added the white and the neutral tint to it. And uh, neutral tint is awesome because your colors will not be muddy when you darken them up. Um, very transparent um, and makes your colors just a little deeper hue or value. I just I'm glad to have both those on my palette. So that's the reason people would ask me that. Why do you have white on there and <laughs> black? But I do enjoy painting opaquely too. I'm excited that they came out with um, some washes. I'm excited to try those <laughs> as well. Um, here are my colors in my palette. I use a heritage palette. Um, I have a, I like a watercolor spray bottle. You can, um, a spray bottle that makes beads of paint rather than, um, or beads of water rather than um, a mist. So that's what I look for in a little watercolor spray bottle. Um, I have a brush, my brush is a uh, Dynasty Black Gold 311. Um, I do paint a lot of plain air because they take groups to Europe. So I have different setups. Um, one that setups um, the in plain air 
uh, painting set up. It's a little heavier than I like, so this, but I, but it's very, it packs well. Um, I'm trying to keep my luggage light. So now I've gone to Etsy and found a, like a another palette that I've been using. That's, I mean, not palette, but easel setup. That's that's really light. Um, Amazon Basics has a nice light easel um, that weighs like nothing. So I usually try to bring that with me now. But you can see my setup. That's and um, so I teach and I juror. I've juried many shows uh, locally and and. Um, in California places. And um, I have my own um, Facebook group called Teresa's Watercolor Sharing Group, and you're all welcome to join. It's all about sharing your art in a very comfortable, positive area. And I built that and grown that. Uh, and so I do contests every summer where some of the prizes have been Daniel Smith paints. I bought them myself and sent them out. And people have really enjoyed that. Um, I'm a teacher. You can see how um, my peppers up there, I'll paint flowers, I paint portraits. And today on the right hand side, you can see that I'm going to paint a kind of a complicated painting, but I'm going to do a little bit of a Rachel Ray cooking show for you today. <laughs> and I do like colorful shadows. You can see that from my little umbrellas um, that are on the left. So enjoy. I do have a little QR code at the top. So if you aim your camera at that at any time, um, your phone camera, you can get to my website. Just, and I, I'm very techy too. So if you have questions about how to do that or something, you can always email me because I, I like enjoy sharing my knowledge with other people in the artist community. I'm very supportive of other artists. Here's some of the places I've taught. I think I forgot a few places on there, but I've gotten France, Sicily, Spain, Italy, Greece, Croatia, Austria, Nova Scotia, Canada. Through and I've take, done cruises, um, California, Washington, Oregon, Utah, and New Mexico. I've taught classes and I've also shown my work. Um, my first art show was actually the, the biggest place you could ever show was I was on Canyon Road in New Mexico. And that was, a, that was um, maybe a little bit before I started uh, teaching for Daniel Smith um, or doing demos for them at their stores. But um, I was really honored to um, have gotten my work in, in a gallery at a and it was a solo show <laughs> right there. At, it was called Mills Gallery. Um, here are some of my sketchbooks. I like to paint, I'll paint tight a little bit sometimes and a little bit loose. So you can see the cherry on the left with the colorful shadows, but look at my um, my flamenco dancer from Barcelona. That was <coughs> all freehand um, with a very light drawing. I didn't do much. I just love making my brush dance. And those are my Daniel Smith color colors I use. I play with greens like to show simple techniques for students that are beginning on the left, the boats. And um, I use Daniel Smith Ground on my Portofino uh, journal. My That journal um, was a Arsha's journal, but now um, I'm looking at a Etcher journals to use because those are no longer available and they use Fabriano paper in them. So hopefully I'm answering some of your questions about the journals and the paper as I go along. So, so the bound one was Arsha's um, 140 pound cold press, and I use cold press on my Escher uh, journals too. So, um, um, and so these are my online classes during COVID. What happened? I couldn't travel any longer, and all the stores and things have closed up. My gallery closed up. I had a gallery and studio on Mercer Island, Washington, where I taught a lot of classes in from mixed media to watercolor. And here um, I'm teaching online Zoom and you can find my classes on the website. Um, I do some, by, some on my own and some through other companies. So um, it was, look how well everybody's painting turned out too. <laughs> I look at that and go, you know, I feel like I'm a strong teacher and um, really guide you through it. And at the end, you can take the, the videos, you get to keep them for yourself to work on the painting later. So that's, it's, it's always positive. Um, here are some of my, these are actually a lot of them from my classes or plein air. And so um, here's some, I paint with a lot of color. I love color. You're going to wonder, oh, her paintings are very light and bright. And that's what I choose to paint. It makes me the happiest. And I think my students, um, the ones that take from me gravitate towards that. 
light and bright and pure color that Daniel Smith has. I do like the granulation in some of the paints, which I'll explain later. Because some people ask you, why do you paint with granular paints? And I'm like, they're natural pigments. <laughs> they're, uh, you know, I know John could go into the paint, the, uh, watching his shows on, on uh, the stone and stones that they use. And um, you're in Chile, so I, I saw you bringing out the stones on the table and showing oh, wow. actually ground, you know, this is real, real, the real deal, not just um, an artificial pigment. So I really enjoy uh, the colors that Daniel Smith has. I think there's another one of these portfolio pages. So like on the right, I paint, I can paint loose and make up the flowers. I like a lot of flowers in the paintings. Um, I like colorful shadow and light. Um, Venice. Uh, the one on the left is Coolier. Um, the one in the down below is Mexico, actually. It's, um, um, where is it? I'm trying to think where it was, but they, um, and, the and then on the top is Venice, and then just a flower painting I did um, in an online uh, workshop live master painting session that I was involved with a bunch of artists. So it was wonderful to be honored to do that. And probably, oh, and then, can you believe it? I do mix, experimental mixed media. I also paint oils, but these are really fun. All of Daniel Smith paints. Um, on the left, it's got some collage. I used to do some fashion illustration work. Um, and so that's that. I, koi fish, there's some fun stencils used in that. That's new. Um, and then above the, you know, the eggs, I like to use a loose brush and see how the colors mix and mingle. And the one on the right, I actually used, um, a, I think you guys, I don't, John, um, there was a gold uh, watercolor paint or something I, I used be, in between. I painted the whole background and then pulled out the forms and then drew on the top of it. And it's that was a lot of fun to do. It's a really Very big nice. Very nice. So those are kind of fun things I do. And then I've been in many publications. Um, uh, they've been in the splash book, which is on the left. That's not my painting. The one that um, the uh, bird's eye beach party is, which is my umbrellas on the beach, which I did use actually gouache in between the umbrellas um, to kind of flatten the painting out, which was really interesting to make the dimensional thing, the transparent water watercolor. Um, so I experiment. The Titoria painting is a demo I did for Daniel Smith um, with their neutral tint. And the Make Every Day a Painting is um, an artist's instruction manual um, that I co-authored. And on the right-hand side is um, some of the work I do with sketches when I um, get a client that I need to work with. And I did this one for in uh, Positano, Italy. I was asked to do one for a business card for a shop, and they had me working on some other things for their for their shop. And that's that's how I work. And um, there's a little art uh, painting in the back, which is actually um, French knots that I did. So I do do other things, um, but everything's pretty crafty. And there's a list of the shows I've been accepted to and, um, and publications I've been in, including American Watercolor Society, um, Daniel Smith catalogs and um, outdoor artists, clean air, watercolor magazine. I've been in Macy's and um, uh, performing Arts Center group, Chaz Stevens, and then the catalog. So those are, that's about me. And here I am, <laughs> stay connected. You can take a screenshot or a picture if you want to get connected with me. Um, I just, I'm really um, open to hearing what you have to say. And if you want to take a class or mentoring or anything, I'm, I'm there for you. And I try to keep encouraging you, especially join my Facebook group, it's really fun. <laughs> so thank you for listening to my little spurt about myself. That's me just recently in Greece sketching. Very nice. <laughs> Very nice. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you. So if you have if you have questions for Teresa um, and they can't wait to the end, go, go ahead and ask them. If they can't wait to the end, that's fantastic. And uh, with that, Teresa, I'd like to give as much time as possible. So anytime you would like to begin is absolutely fine. Ready right now. Um, so okay. how I'm going to work this, um, 
If you are, we're on my uh, mailing list or um, you might have received the drawing for this. If you'd like to receive the drawing and packet that I uh, sent out, plus with my supply, Daniel Smith paints and supply list. Sorry, I'll show you quick, quick. Um, I sent this to the to my um, email list. You can um, you can you got the whole packet. They could download and um, and what how I designed the painting. And I'll talk a little bit as I go along um, about the design. But you you can email me and I will send it to you or get on my email email list. My and then I'll um, and then send me a shoot me note like I didn't get that packet. So you can paint along with me. A lot of times, like if I'm teaching, I might do something a little bit in Photoshop. I in the original photograph, um, this hollyhock was poked way above the building. I kind of wanted to move it down. I can draw it too, but sometimes I like I'm pretty good with quick with Photoshop, so I can move things around pretty quickly. I decided that design would be better leading into the building, so your eye brings around the page. So, um, so that's what I did. And it's obvious that I've painted this before. My brushes, I have the Black Gold 311. This is number two, and I have a four. This one's another brush, it's by Connoisseur, and it's, it's kind of a crazy hair brush, but it makes a nice tip so you can do fun little line work. Um, those are the two brushes basically I'm gonna use today. I might grab this, uh, the bigger one, the four. Um, so what I'm gonna do first is, here's my, I've got a little drawing here. I'm gonna start with the sky. Since we only have 45 minutes or less to do this, I'm going to show you as in sort of as stages and try to get as, through as much of it as I can. I have a paper towel at the bottom. I have two water jugs in front of me. Um, this is lavender I'm grabbing and, and cobalt blue. And I wanna do the sky. And when you're, when you're in the beginning course, I usually tilt my board up a little bit. So I might have to bring it up a little bit when I'm, doing this, it set my, set like an earbuds or something under it. Um, so what I do is tilt it up a little and then, um, and start at the top. If you're um, doing a sky, you might want to put down a little bit of water first. I'm going to put a little blue or lavender in the, in the water so you can see where I'm putting it. Just wetting it down all the way get my glasses on so I can even see better uh all the way down and around I did not mask off the hollyhock just kind of going around them if you want to have a little softer edge you could drop a little green in those areas but and there's some more lavender okay Teresa, then you did have a question in the chat and they were wondering what kind of uh planar easel do you use um it's an end planar um easel is what i've used in the past i now found a gal if you email me or something i'll try to look it up but i found a she might not like it because i found her on etsy somebody that's making them <laughs> she might get too many orders from all you guys <laughs> but it's a lot lighter weight it's a wood one but the end plane air has a nice shelf on it. It's just a little heavier to travel with um, when you're going like to Europe or something. So um, in the clouds here, I've got the um, cobalt blue coming in. And then um, you can use a thirsty brush, which a thirsty brush is you take the water out of the brush and then pick up some cloud formations if you want um, to make them a little varied. And then a lot of times I'll, what I'll do in this in the clouds is drop a little warm in it. And the, the best color I recommend for cloud formations is Dan Smith's um, Naples yellow, because the Naples yellow, it doesn't make green clouds. So this, for some reason, it works so nicely to get, just warm up your cloud formations, maybe as they're hitting the, something's hitting the ground, to add a little bit, how that warms that up. And I'm mixing it pretty, I should show you mixing it here. It's, um. It's pretty light. I've not had a little water in it, but I don't want to go back in with too much water. So I tap my brush off and then I'll just drop some of this and it'll you'll get that nice glow in these clouds without trying to uh, see how that reflects reflecting the ground. Uh, let's see, I'm going to continue this down a little bit and a little bit lighter towards the horizon. So maybe a little more lavender rather than, um, and 
not getting too fussy today. Just want to get you guys to see my painting style. And um, so anyway, I don't want to get too much going on here. So I'm going to get out of it now. I'm going to move down to the greens. So this phthalo yellow green um, is what I have at the bottom. And I'm trying to move this over so you can see me mixing. Pretty light. Um, same as I did the, um, the, the Naples yellow. I'm just gonna, we're gonna bring it up into the clouds here in and around my um, Collihawk. Um, this is my bright, brightest, lightest green. Yeah, I can even bring some in there and let it be just bleed softly into that. Uh, you'll see I can paint really fast and then, um, then I get tighter at the end if I'd like. Um, into that, I like to, the, my bright colors are this pyro orange, but it a little bit goes a long way with it. So again, mix it sort of light like tea and you can drop that into areas into the green and you can get some nice, um, nice color coming in of some flowers. This, this plant actually had some of this, um, some, some orangey flowers on it. So I'm just getting a little more green in there. And then I, I also like quinacridone rose um, is a really pretty transparent. So I'm going to make a little bit of that up next to the orange. I'm, dab no, I'm dabbing off my brush when I go back in um, so that so I get some of the pigment off. I mean, some of the water out of the brush. I have two pinks on my palette, um, if you've noticed. One is... Um, and remember to connect some of these flowers. They're not just by themselves. Um, so the two pinks on my palette are, um, I use a um, magenta and I have the um, quinacro magenta and, and quin rose. And uh, you can pretty much, you can make some of the quin magenta by um, adding a little blue, but I just like having it right there because I love doing flowers to have the right colors there. So before, ooh, that's fun. Need a little more color in down here. Um, my granular green is my um, green appetite. I have a hard edge here. I'll come back to that in a minute. Um, is uh, my green appetite. Pull this down now, so I don't really need to worry about it rushing back into it. And so green appetite is a is a really nice natural green that has some granulation in it. So I'm gonna stick it up in here. Here's my picture. I just wanted you to be able to see sort of what I'm, I'm doing. I have to keep looking at the clock. <laughs> I'm gonna drop a little more of the pinks in there. This maybe is a little more shaded area. I'm going around the, the flowers, the my hollyhocks. My grandmother used to have some hollyhocks in her garden. And, um, you know, I didn't know really, they were just really beautiful. And they, they grew like weeds. And I tried to grow them and they don't grow at all. So my thumb isn't as green as my grandmother. <laughs> but anyway, see how that's kind of coming to life. Uh, so I'm painting around that. There's a wall here. There's a little bit of green back in here. I'm going to skip over to this side just a little bit to get in some of these light greens. So I'm going back again with this, um, the phthalo yellow green. And I want to say something too. I think um, I think this is being recorded so that, um, you know, later you can come back and look at the demo and try to paint it yourself. Not too. So I'm just going to throw into the sky a little bit of the, the greens of this tree that's coming up here. Another one of my favorite, let's see, where does this go? Oh, another one of my favorite um, blues and greens is this cobalt teal blue down here. So I like to throw that into, um, I can see it looks a little tealy up here. I might throw a little bit of the teal blue right in there. You can see it crossed over into the sky. So. And I hold my brush different ways so that I can get the um, the tech, you know, the technique into it. Um, 
I'm just not going to do too much in this tree, just a little bit to show where my branches are so that I, I have a little bit of a guide for my own self. So I'll warm it up a little. Um, to warm up your green, if it's too you know, bright and zingy for you, you can always take some of the, um, you can always take some of your, uh, I have Verona gold ochre, whatever your yellow ochre is, you can always throw that a little into the green and it comes becomes a little more under sea like green. That's not quite so um, crazy bright. And then in here, kind of make your brush sort of dance. Here's some, I'm just going to grab some, uh, some of the green appetite and throw it at the underside of these just so I know where, so it's going to have some shadows. I hope I'm making it look easy. <laughs> Don't think too hard, just keep going. <laughs> and here's some more. Um, I'm going to bite this one to be a little more bright. I'm going to come in with the house, uh, the wash on this house. Um, so I don't want to get too, too worried about, get too fussy right in here yet. Okay, so this just little green appetite to where I'm. I'm leaving spots for the trunk and maybe some more darks in there. So that's that's why I kind of spaced it out. Start with their lightest, brightest. It's kind of nice to do that. I'm gonna have to wait till this dries a little bit. So I guess I'll work, um, come down a little bit onto this this bush here. Or let's see what I have as moss. I created a, a little bush in here. So maybe I'll, yeah, I didn't, there was a real dead hole back in here, kind of dark. So I decided I'll, make a little bit of a bush. When you're, when you're changing the color of a, a plant, a, 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 sorry, if you're changing the color of, of a new plant or something, you might change up the color of your green. So you can add a little more blue. Um, I have phthalo, um, phthalo turquoise on my, my palette, which is really fun to mix with this green appetite. And it becomes more of a viridian color. Um, let's see, should get a, should have a plain sheet of paper out. I have one. It's more of a, you can, you can get a little more viridian color. If you add a little neutral tint to it, you can deepen that up without dirtying the color. So that's a really fun way to change the mix. Um, so I might do that for this plant here. With a little more green appetite in it. Some people are scared of greens. I think it's really beautiful. I guess because I grew up in the Northwest, you know, if you um, grew up there, you kind of learn to work with what you got. There's a million different greens in the yes. Northwest. Millions. <laughs> so um, clean gold is a fun color to throw into it too. I have quinacridone gold is one of my most favorite colors that Daniel Smith makes because um, it makes my paintings really glow. And I'll show you why when I get into the building, it's just um, something about it kind of the paint kind of separates and it has this nice yellow kind of buttercup glow. And I think it's just gorgeous. So I better stop there. I think I have some flowers, some lavender I put in there. Um, okay, it's getting drier. I'm doing pretty good 11 o'clock. What I'm going to show you is um, getting this part and then I'm going to, if I get to it at the end, a little bit of the flowers, um, uh, just the tightness of the flowers. Um, but okay, so the next thing you might want to clean off a portion in your palette. Uh, the pink's okay, but we don't want any green in our building right now, unless you have a little moss growing up the building, you know. So what I'm going to do is is start with my building with Naples yellow and lemon yellow. Um, I have two buckets, I don't know if you see it, I have two buckets of water. I always dump, dunk one in this one and then one in that so that, um, uh, so that I can clean my brushes and I have clean water as I go. So anyway, so lemon yellow is just really a sunny yellow. And I really worked hard when, um, 
they said, oh, you can do this dot card, what colors would you choose? And I worked really hard on finding the, the most, the brightest and most like lively colors that I could choose and work for me. So, so I've got the lemon yellow, then um, I've got Naples yellow, so that's good. And then in the walls, I like to have these, um, the walls have some other color instead of being so flat. Um, so I like to grab a cobalt teal blue, maybe, maybe some of my Quinn Rose and put it into the wall. So I have rose there, mm -hmm. put some teal right here. So I have some colors. Um, I did like, you guys had, uh, Daniel Smith had like malachite. There's some really uh, fun colors you can try in there. I'm showing my 18 colors, so I can't grab that, but I would show some more granular colors too. Another one of my favorite, um, I'm gonna put them out, like granular colors is Lunar Earth. Um, I like Mayan violets, fun fuse and then um in, to make things granular I like the Mayan colors a lot and then the lunar 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 colors are awesome I mean they have so many any other favorites John you have they're so fun um there's just so I'm, many granular colors yeah yeah so I'm going to just start with um wetting this down a little bit so you can see I'm just going to start with the, the Naples yellow and just drop it in um again if you want you can Push your, hold your paper up so you can get the colors going down. Leave it a little lighter on this side. And I'm going to paint right over the shadow because it's such a light color that, um, you know, sometimes you can paint your shadows separately, but I'm just painting right over it. And then we're going to put the shadow in after. Um, I, I'm going to throw in a little bit of the rose kind of in here. Into the colors, going to show a little bit of teal in there. Now I'm going to get into some more of a little sunnier yellow. I'm, I'm just throwing right in there is that lemon yellow. You're going to go, oh my gosh, that's a lot of colors. But that's what's going to make it glow. See how it's kind of glowing right in here. It's like, so you can kind of direct your focal point and where you want it, where you want it to look. I can't just want the uh, viewer to kind of come up and look at this and keep coming around and just studying the painting. Um, that's the design I have. Keep going down. There's some green um, in here on the wall, going right over the top of here. Trying to make it kind of simple for you guys. So it's not, I don't know what's going on in here. There's some shadows too, um, by the trees so that are falling. Um, I didn't put any masking fluid. I did in my directions for students is you can always put some little masking fluid where, where you want light to hit it. So like maybe right here or mask off the, um, the little stonework that's coming along and just add a little masking fluid. I, I, don't, I don't love masking fluid. Um, I painted many paintings with it, but I think it's much more freeing not to have to do that with the masking. I'm just gonna come right over into this wall and the wall goes through here. And this wall has some green in it because it has mossiness to it. There's, a, there's something back there, but sorry. Um, so yellow ochre, my uh, Verona gold ochre. Throw in here. And then this wall. Um, maybe I'll throw some down here so I can get farther along in the painting here. You can crop your painting too at the um, at the end. And, um, you know, I always like to frame it about eight by 10. So it's, I'll sometimes go a little farther up and up at the top and the bottom or the side so I can move it around when I frame. And then I'm gonna just throw some greens, uh, green appetite. I guess I have to use a little lighter green right in here because I have the darker one on the wall in that part and some greens. And then there's this fantastic ivy that's coming up the wall. So I'm getting, a, you can't see my palette anymore. Green Appetite, tap, tap. And then I'm just gonna do a little bit with some of the yellow greens. It's a little bit damp right now, but that's okay. It'll just bleed up into the this wall here and it's, just keep changing your colors. You go back into your palette. Keep 
keep it nice and loose like that, I guess. Going a little darker. Okay, got through that part. Um, in this area, there is some stones, so I still need to um, to do a little bit more of uh, the kind of an underpainting. So um, I'm going to use the um, I got the yellow ochre and a little Naples yellow. Throw that in here. This is before I'm doing the stone, so I'm just going right into that area and right into here. This is there we go. Okay, um, now we've got a little bit of a um, got the roof and a little more up here. I gotta start moving along. <laughs> so um, burnt sienna and a little bit of the orange, uh, my pyro orange for up in here. And come back and do a little calligraphy after. So I've got, so at least I still have a roof, roof in. I'm going to take a little of the Quinn gold. You can see my Quinn, love it. Just throw it right up in here, just the underside, just so. Just have a little bit more glow. Um, all right, so now I'm going to go in with this. Um, this is dry enough. I'm going to do a shadow here. Um, my shadow is going to be, um, oops, cobalt, the cobalt teal, the row. This is the same colors I was using. Uh, that's making a little bit. Um, there we go. So I'm going to use the um, Verona Gold Ochre and just come in lightly, put the shadow, and I'm going to drop the other colors in. So rinse my brush, the teal, let it mix and mingle really lightly, um, and then um, some of the rose that I had in here just darker of the same colors that I was using, but let them mix and mingle. And have their own little party on the page. <laughs> uh, so fun. And then right in down into there. And I have a shadow like over here, just some color into. Got a little bit of a puddle. All right, and then I've got the shadow down here. Same thing. I'm gonna take um, a little rose. Blue. You can even make it a little purple if you want. It's not gonna hurt anything. Oh, I added a little of the blue, so it made a little purple. Oh, there's one under here as well. Maybe there's my cobalt teal. It's fun. It's really fun. All right, so now we've got one across here, this area. And I'm grabbing a little of the yellow. Connect, let it connect. Here we go. And under here, so you might want to dry some rose. I have some Quinn Gold to put in this window back here that I didn't do. Okay, now um, I'm also going to take the Quinn Gold right now and stick it right in here. It gives my uh, window a little bit of a glow. And then some Cobalt Teal. 
it, again, it a little greener than I like it. So just a little bit more. Add a little pink to it, kind of cool it down. And then just get these windows kind of in lightly there. And here it's it's really fun there. It's uh, I would say I would use my burnt sienna. So I can make some burnt sienna and then use the cobalt teal blue in this one too. So I'm using the four. I bet I'm gonna switch to the two. The two. Teal blue. So today, you know, you're just getting a little bit of my painting style and how I teach um, classes. So um, it's, you know, it's not a race. If you were in the class, you'd have, three, you'd actually have two days to do this painting. So just FYI. Mm -hmm. And um, burnt sienna, I'd like to put a little bit of here with some lavender for the door. Lavender in there. I like to, lavender is a really great um, color that Dan Smith has because it's um, very, uh, gives it this little coolness, but it also gives a little pop of color. So you can just like, you could throw a little up in there. It um, tones it down a little bit without being, getting it too, um, it tones it down without, without getting it too bright and crazy. So there's a shadow that goes across that um, window that will go in later. Um, Queen Gold, um, I think of reflective light, things that bounce off the ground light or off of things. And so I like to add where I think there would be a bounce of light, which is under doorways and things like that would add, be adding a little bit of um, the warm um, Queen, Queen Gold. And let's see, I was gonna use a little lavender. Right. Now, let's see, I didn't finish. I'll finish this a little bit here. Okay, and then um, if you're to do some little rock work, stonework, now this is dry, it's getting dry there. You would use, um, kind of take a, take a, it's a shadow color. So, so I'm using uh, lavender and then, um, what am I doing at a time? Lavender and a little bit of, um, uh, let's see, uh, cobalt teal blue and put in the shadow in here and leave spots where there may be some rocks. And so, um, and connect them. And so you get a little bit of a texture and then uh, drop in some cobalt to your blue. Get this shadow going. Not gonna have that many rocks. The other thing you can do is um, to get texture is throw in, um, use a little bit of your squirt bottle uh, to, to get some texture back in it. And at that you do that right as it's about to dry. And okay, so then the foreground, let's get this in. So, so we've got some yellow ochre with some uh, burnt sienna and you can just kind of go all the way where your path would be. And now on the other, other side, cause there's gonna be a shadow over the top. On the other side, you use the, gr the green. So it's like um, maybe the grass is coming around. So I've got my green here, throw that in, come around around, connect it, and then, then you can let it dry and have, um, then come back in with um, your shadows afterwards. And let's see, do this green up here. So about 15, um, just about 15 left or something, I guess. Um, exactly. So, um, so what I'm going to do is really quickly show you the trunk, and then I'm going to move into just I'm um, probably do one flower so that you can see. So this is just um, this is uh, permanent brown, 
and you can mix it with a little neutral tint. You get a lighter, you can make it a little, add a little blue, uh, uh, you can add same, some cobalt blue to it. So you can see the trunk coming through, right? And then you can take these, um, some of the spots and make them a little bit darker. Um, I, I have neutral tint, cobalt blue, and you can kind of shat, put some shadows in under these areas in different spots to make them disappear slightly. So you can see it started starting to come together as a tree. Um, and this, there's a shadow over the top of here. And then the finishing things would be to put, you put your, um, you put your bars in the windows, you know, a little bit of, it looks pretty dark in this, um, shed some more light on it, but, um, but you can see how, how colorful the shadows are. And then, um, the lavender, um, I usually take for flowers, just kind of like put some really kind of, uh, lavender and then some of my magenta, um, just, just really be loose and fun and, um, with, with your flowers. We can bring it up into there. Um, and then, um, then I take the light green, mix that in a little. And the darker green at the bottom. So, so that would be green appetite with some of your um, phthalo green. And I'll just bring that up into here. But mix and mingle, blend together, keep your part, the fun going, <laughs> fun little party going. Um, my shadow, I just got green in here. My shadow for the, would be permanent brown. It could have some, a purple in it. It could have some burnt sienna. It could have some gold in it too um, for the shadows that are around here. So just, it's still a little damp, but I can kind of show you. I love having a little purples. These colors are just gorgeous, mixing and mingling together. And it might be shadows from something falling from the side. Um, So one more shadow over here, um, that's permanent brown. So basically I've started, I've got it close to um, ready to do the flowers. So I'm gonna be a, do a little switcheroo on you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and just bring in another one. So, cause it's not quite dry, but I'll, I'll hold it up. See the colors mixing and mingling. Um, and then I went to, did this one last night with just a little bit more tighter, a little bit. I thought, well, it's dry enough now I can do the flowers. I kept this loose here. I could add some more color into it like I did the other one. Um, but the flowers are gorgeous. They're um, So these are hollyhocks. And one thing I like to add a little bit to my reason, they zing a little bit more. And I'm not really afraid of like, a little bit of a fugitive color and light fastness. So um, I like to bring in a little bit of um, the, what do you call it? opera, opera pink that Daniel Smith has. So colors have, so I'm gonna clean a spot. So, so I'll probably do um, um, a little bit of the green in one flower. So you'd be able to see it. And then I'll put out the um, the piece that's in the, in the book so you can kind of um, see the finished one. So there's a little bit of the pink I just put out. I have two, I have both the, I'll make some puddles. I have the magenta and then I've got the rose. So I've got lots of pinks and then a little bit of yellows are nice too. So you could add a little bit of uh, your lemon, kind of gives it a little more of a peachy tone. Um, 
So I'll start with this one because this is my the one I want the brightest. The other ones can all follow. So I'm going to choose a, some of these uh, beautiful uh, the opera just like right up in in here. So, And it has some shadows. So then I'd use, bring in my magenta. You can use some cobalt blue if you want a little more, more shadow in it. So I'm getting kind of these shadow shapes, um, a little of the rose. You can also leave the leave the highlights white for a little bit and then come back and add some color in it. I can take my um, crazy brush too and, and bring some little stripes through. This is um, fun. fun to keep it loose. And and taking my rose right up in here. This is uh, the queen rose. Might warm it up where it's getting the sun is hitting it. So I got a little of the. A uh, little of the yellow is what I was going to say in it. I did not do the center yet, as you can see. A little cooler down in there. Um, I'm gonna take some little bit of yet lemon yellow right in here for the center. And it also has a darker spot in there where it's where I put in some of the neutral tint uh, as my dark. Stamen. And I'll lose the stamen in there. So see how that's sort of coming together. And there's a little bit of you have to go with a little thicker paint when it's all wet like this or let it dry. And then there's, I have a green leaf that's coming over the top that's over here. So this, make it a little darker than the other one. And then if I get, I could get out a hair dryer or something right here. And then I would have, um, I could take some questions now I'm finishing it. They think that's a good time. I don't want to. Certainly if anybody has questions, please go ahead and ask. What is the name of the crazy brush? I missed it. It's a uh, by Connoisseur. It's a Rizlon Rigger. Oop, I don't know if you can see it. There. Rizlon Rigger. Thank you. So, and Teresa, your familiarity okay. with your palette is just wonderful to watch. Have you painted with that same palette for many, many years? Um, for the recently, I have for a few years now with this palette. Um, it is good to know the map, your color map. I mean, it's just really great to know where what you're reaching, what you're reaching for. Um, yeah, I had one that had like thirty. I have some different palettes. I have one that has like thirty something colors on, it. but this one's this one mixes so many colors. Why I don't really need it. The other one, but you know, I'm a I'm a art fanatic. So I buy lots of stuff and want to try them out. So they might be in a different palette. I may have all browns in one palette. 
but yeah, I think it's good to have one that can go with you, travel with you, like to Europe and things that, um, that, you know, that you can travel with, take with you and, and that you, you do know when you're reaching in what colors you're grabbing. I'm just, it's, it's rewarding to watch. And I've really enjoyed this, your demonstration. Um, and the variety of colors is just amazing to be that familiar with to me. So thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I'm glad you're enjoying it. On this end, it's like, oh, I picked too hard of a painting for all of you. <laughs> but I just really wanted to show my vibrant colors and what Daniel's with paints can do. They're just like. So Hi, Teresa. This is Rajat here. I'm just yeah. asking before using the Daniel Smith colors, Hi. which are the which is the other brand you are using? I don't have and another. How do, you, how do you how do you put uh, Daniel Smith into into this? How uh, you're interacting with these colors? I just wanted to. Um, well, first question is like I. I don't have other colors. I mean, I have tried other brands and I, I do have other colors by other brands, but I don't use other colors because, I mean, I'd, I'd like to note, tell my students which which one is the best, you know, like why. So I do try out other things, other colors, mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. um, but I totally st stuck by these. And, you know, I've been painting for a long time. So when I... Um, my, you know, you talk about light fast. I mean, I'm, I'm watching, not that I'm, they're going to be, I'm not going to, you know, they're going to outlive me, but <laughs> you know, the paintings, but they like, even the opera hasn't faded and I'm like, Oh, this is good. <laughs> you know? Thank you. Yeah. Yes. So you can see what? how this come to bed. Go ahead. More questions. You use, use only a quill, mainly really the quill brush all the time, right? Versus... Yes. This brush, look at the point, and it holds a whole bunch of paint. Yeah. You don't take off, never take off this plastic part, it'll fall apart if you get one. Um, it's on my supply list, but here it is. If you can find it, it's really kind of tricky to find on some of the websites, um, the art supply stores, I don't know why. You have to kind of look up, um, this one's by Dynasty, so you have to kind of go Dynasty brushes and dig dig into them, or um, or I have a link on my, on my um on my supply list. And I, I think I have a discount code on, on a store, but they run out sometimes. So, I, you know, don't blame me if it's not available. You mainly use the two? I see you're using the two. Is that? I like the two. I think it's a good size for this size of painting or might be for a little bigger one. Um, I have them I mean, in all different sizes. I have triple odd, odd. So if I was really wanting to do detail, like I really, if you're really trying to do detailed um, hollyhock flowers, you know, you might, um, you might want to have a little tiny brush, but you know, I try to just, um, I just put some lavender over the white there. Um, yeah. So that's, did I answer your question? Okay. <laughs> so we had a question in the chat and mm -hmm. they would like to know where will you be teaching plein air painting sometime soon? Oh, thanks for that one. Um, I am going to be teaching um, in the desert. I'm hoping to do it. Uh, this is California um, in Palm Desert area in January to February. I'm in Pasadena in April. Um, that's in the U.S. Then there's a workshop in Southwest France um, in June. Um, two dates where first week I think is sold out. So um, there's room in the second week. And then in the fall, Sicily. So join us and and they're they they fill up. They're they're really fun. I like to love. And if you have a you you live in a different state and you want me to come there, all you have to do is get a group together, say come paint with me, and you know, and I, I can work work things out too to come to different different areas. Um I've taught for some different watercolor societies in the past, so um you know, brought in and workshops or something. I, I do that, so. Teresa, it's so good to be with you and just 
Uh, this is Carol Long. I took classes from you and just the stimulation of all the colors you drop in. I just love it. Put the put the finished one down. <laughs> it's like pretty similar. Thank you, Carol. That's so nice of you. I um I think it's teach at Women's University Club with some of these ladies too. And it's um it's, Thank you. That was so nice. It made me feel good. <laughs> it's really hard to uh, show a demo so short and uh, and have everybody um, knowing what I'm doing. But I think you can see to finish up, um, you know, in the different stages. I think um, it's time now. Is there any more here? I can put them out. That, so this was the stage I showed you today. And if you went a little slower, you could get a little more detail. There's stage two, and then there's stage three. It's <laughs> beautiful. You did a mm -hmm. great job. I find it interesting that you don't use um, ultramarine or cerulean on your palette, just the cobalt. No, you know what? Um, so when I, I can mix um, mix those colors pretty much, I like um, cerulean. My favorite, though, was Magnanese Blue by Daniels. <laughs> But I didn't put it on here because I had to place, replace, like fit my cobalt teal and the lavender in there, but I did like manganese. But what I can do with my white is add some of the white to the color, like my blue and get more of a, um, I can even get sort of a birdier blue with it, um, it, mixing. So it's really just fun. I mean, to be able to play, like if I add that blue with some white, I can, I can change that up, see? And so then I get a little more of a birdier. How do you say that? Bird? Birdie, birdie, birdie or blue? <laughs> right now, I've like gotten my right vein, but it's it made it more of a pastel, so it's fun. And then it, and it's I'm not saying it's illegal to add the those like color splash back on something, you know, like to add a little more color dots. That's sort of what gouache does. <laughs> it just has some. Nice. Um, well, awesome. Teresa, thank you. thank you very much. It was wonderful to watch. You're, you're just wonderful. You're so quick. Um, it's a short window, 45 minutes is a short window. That was beautiful. Thank you very, very much. Oh, thank you. I hope thank you, Teresa. Guys, that was really a pleasure. And from Chile, even, I can't believe you're there. So <laughs> I so appreciate you having me. And I just want to spread the love of my paints with everyone. And that's all the color behind me to see. <laughs> It was a pleasure. Days. Please, everybody, visit um, Teresa's website. Um, somebody asked if her email address, et cetera, is on there. I'm sure it's all on there. Um, it's It's been listed, so please go view her, her website. And with that, Teresa, thank you so much for joining. Thank, thank you, so everybody, much, everybody, for being here today. Seems too bye short. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.